Hi, it's Sue with today's Bible reading, and I'm reading for February 6, chapter 16 through 18. And today's reading is about some moral and ceremonial laws, including in this first chapter, um, the Day of Atonement, which is interesting to me. So I'm looking forward to this reading. Verse 1. Yahweh spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they came near before Yahweh and died. And Yahweh said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come at just any time into the most holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is on the ark, lest he die, for I will appear in the cloud on the mercy seat. So pretty powerful right off the bat. You know, you had that most holy place. Let me just stop. So you had the three areas, the, the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place where uh, there's a lot to this but from what i understand the priest assumed the tabernacle was the same as the temple that they built later but the priest only went in there once a year and maybe that's what god is about to to explain to moses and aaron but that most holy place was the place where the presence of god would come on the mercy seat which was placed on top of the ark which was a rectangular box and it was all overlaid with gold We've already read through a bunch of that. Um, so so that just sets it up a visual for you a little bit. Um, so it's warning. He's saying, tell Aaron, your brother, not to come just at any time into that most holy place. It's also called the Holy of Holies. Within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is on the ark, lest he die. God will appear on the cloud on the mercy seat. So just like Aaron's sons didn't do things in the proper order that god said and they died it was for their protection okay it's not like god just said you didn't obey me and wiped them out he gave them those instructions so that they would be safe and they went outside of that covering and died so now he's given protective instructions to moses to give to aaron so aaron won't die he's not threatening him saying like do what i say or die he's saying look there's it's I, i've used this analogy before my husband and i work with nuclear power that there are rules to working with nuclear power there's rules to working with electricity. Well, this radiating glory of God has properties to it. God's presence, God is light. His presence has a radiation, which has an effect. Think about this. This is the reason for the, I, my theory, for the gold overlay, for the thick veil that separated that area. It's all radiation protection. And that's coming from a radiation protection te technician, okay? So... It just it changes your perspective to look at it that way. Verse three, Aaron shall come into the sanctuary with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen tunic. He shall have linen trousers on his body and shall put on the linen sash and he shall be clothed with the linen turban. They are the holy garments. He shall bathe his body in water and put them on. He shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two male goats for sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and set them before Yahweh at the door of the tent of the meeting. Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one for the lot, uh, one lot for Yahweh and the other lot for the scapegoat. Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for Yahweh and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for the scapegoat shall be presented alive before Yahweh to make atonement for him to send him away as the scapegoat into the wilderness. Aaron shall present the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself. He shall take a censer full of coals from the fire from off the altar before Yahweh, and two handfuls of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. He shall put the incense on the fire before Yahweh, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the covenant, so that he will not die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat on the east. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with his blood as he did with the blood of the bull and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. He shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions even all their sins, so he shall do for the tent of the meeting that dwells with them in the middle of their uncleanness. No one shall be in the tent of meeting when he enters to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out and has made atonement for himself and for his household and for all the assembly of Israel. He shall go out to the altar that is before Yahweh and make atonement for it. 
and shall take some of the bull's blood and some of the goat's blood and put it around the horns of the altar. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and make it holy from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. When he has finished atoning for the holy place, the tent of the meeting and the altar, he shall present the live goat. Aaron shall lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, and he shall put them on the head of the goat and shall send him away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is ready. The goat shall carry all their iniquities on him to a solitary land, and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. Aaron shall come into the tent of the meeting <laughs> excuse me, and shall take off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. Then he shall bathe himself in water in a holy place, put on his garments and come out and offer his burnt offering and burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. The fat of the sin offering he shall burn on the altar. He who lets the goat go as a scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp. The bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place shall be carried outside the camp and they shall burn their skins, their flesh and their dung with fire. He who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall camp in, come into the camp. It shall be a statute to you forever. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls, that's a fast, and shall do no kind of work, the Sabbath, whether native-born or a stranger, okay, so that's both Hebrews and foreigners who are believers in Yahweh. You might want to remember that verse because it proves that it wasn't just uh, the children of Israel was not just Hebrews alone. Um, for on this day you shall at shall atonement be made for you to cleanse you. You shall be clean from all your sins before Yahweh. It is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you, and you shall afflict your souls. It is a statute forever. The priest who is anointed and who is consecrated to be priest in his father's place shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen garments, even the holy garments. Then he shall make the atonement for the holy sanctuary. He shall make atonement for the tent of the meeting and for the altar. And he shall make atonement for the priests and for all the peoples of the assembly. This shall be an everlasting statute to you to make atonement for the children of Israel once in the year because of all their sins. It was done as Yahweh commanded Moses. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel and say to them, this is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Whatever the man there is in the house of Israel who kills a bull or a lamb or a goat in camp and who kills it outside the camp and hasn't brought it to the door of the tent of the meeting to offer it as an offering to Yahweh before Yahweh's tabernacle, blood shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood. That man shall be cut off from among his people. This is to the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices, which they sacrifice in the open field, that they may bring them to Yahweh to the door of the tent of meeting to the priest and sacrifice them for sacrifices of peace offerings to Yahweh. The priest shall sprinkle the blood on Yahweh's altar at the door of the tent of meeting and burn the fat for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. They shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to goat idols after which they play the prostitute. This shall be a statute forever to them throughout their generations. That's funny. The fat is a pleasant aroma because doesn't everybody love that smell, that barbecue smell? <laughs> it's funny. Verse 8. You shall say to them, any man there is of the house of Israel or of the strangers who live as foreigners among them who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and doesn't bring it to the door of the tent of meeting to sacrifice it to Yahweh, that man shall be cut off from his people. Any man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who live as foreigners among them who eats any kind of blood, I will set my face against that soul who eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. It is by reason of life. Therefore, I have said to the children of Israel, no person among you may eat blood, nor may any stranger who lives as a foreigner among you eat blood. Whatever man there is of the children of Israel or of the strangers who live as foreigners among them, who takes in hunting any animal or bird that may be eaten, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust. For as to the life of the flesh, its blood is with its life. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any kind of flesh, for the life of all flesh is in its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. Every person that eats that dies of itself, or that which is torn by animals, whether he is native born or foreigner, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he doesn't wash then, them or bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. Last chapter. 
Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Yahweh your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt where you lived. You shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan where I'm bringing you. You shall not follow their statutes. You shall do my ordinances. You shall keep my statutes and walk in them. I am Yahweh your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my ordinances, which if a man does, he shall live in them. I am Yahweh. Again, he's giving them protective instructions, he just said, so that they can live. I'm showing you how to live. Follow me. I am the God of creation, the God of life, the Lord God of the universe. I am outside of time. I am the objective observer, right? I am light. I am life. So he's saying, don't follow the Egyptians where you came from. Don't follow the Canaanites where you're going. Follow me. It's like, I always have this picture of, like, God's leading me through a wilderness. Let's say he, he wants to bring me through a wilderness time in my life. It's for the purpose of getting somewhere. And it's like, he's saying, okay, hold my hand. Just get behind me and hold my hand. Or, you know, get behind me and walk in my footsteps. And I'm going to get you through this. That's kind of like what God's saying here. He's like, okay, now hold on to me and let's go. I got you, right? Um, verse 6, none of you shall approach any close relative to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahweh. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father, nor the nakedness of your mother. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is your father's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or born abroad. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your son's daughter, or of the daughter's daughter, even the nakedness, for theirs is their own nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, conceived by your father, since she's your sister. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister, she is your father's near kinswoman. <clears throat> you shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. You shall not approach his wife, she is your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law, she is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife, it's your brother's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. You shall not take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are near kinswoman. It is wickedness. You shall not take a wife in addition to her sister to be a rival to uncover her nakedness while her sister is alive. You shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is impure by her uncleanness. You shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. You shall not give any of your children as a sacrifice to Molech. Okay, so obviously, look this up. Look at, look at how they did those sacrifices to Molech. This was going on at that time. That gives you a clue to why God was going to destroy the, the races that were in the land of Canaan. You shall not give any of your children as a sacrifice to Molech. You shall not profane the name of your God. I am Yahweh. You shall not lie with a man as a woman. That is detestable. You shall not lie with any animal to defile yourself with it. No woman may give herself to an animal to lie down with it. It is a perversion. Don't defile yourself with any of these things, for in all these things the nations which I am casting out before you were defiled. The land was defiled. Therefore I punished its iniquity, and the land vomited out her inhabitants. And that is an exact cycle that has been repeated over and over throughout history. Do I say, I'm warning you. This is where your behavior is going to lead. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense, if it doesn't seem right, if it seems insensitive. There's things that God knows that we don't know, and these things lead to destruction. So he says, the land vomited out her inhabitants. You, therefore, shall keep my statutes and my ordinances and shall not do any of these abominations, neither the native-born nor the stranger who lives as a foreigner among you. For the men of the land that were before you had done all these abominations, and the land became defiled. Let the land not vomit you out also when you defile it as it vomited out the nation that was before you. Oh, God, help our nation. Verse 29. For whoever shall do any of these abominations, even the souls that do them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore, you shall keep my requirements that you do not practice any of these abominable customs which were practiced before you, and that you do not defile yourselves with them. I am Yahweh, your God. That's the end of today's reading. Thank you for joining me. Be sure to check the description for some helpful links. And until next time, God bless you.